flanking uh, summit. Climate change is making California's wildfire season worse and more frequent, turning the city of angels into a landscape of hellfire. For John Christensen, things got way too close for comfort when one of those wildfires encroached upon the University of California, Los Angeles in late October. In the middle of the night, uh, around 3 a.m., uh, our phones started going off with uh, alerts uh, that there was a major fire just a couple miles from here uh, along the along the highway um, and uh, when the alarm went off uh, to, uh, you know at six o'clock in the morning we got up and turned on the radio and they were uh, talking about closing down the highway and we soon got notice after that that the university would also be closed down uh, for, for the day. Christensen is a journalist in residence from the UCLA Institute of Environment and Sustainability, and he pointed to the fires as the norm now in the area, not the exception. You know, it was a, it was a very dramatic, close reminder of, you know, what some are calling, you know, the new abnormal um, that, uh, you know, we're, we're experiencing now um, with, you know, in increasingly dramatic and erratic weather uh, and, you know, in, um, increasing droughts uh, uh, and, and uh, you know, in, increasing, increasing fires. According to California's Department of Forestry and Fire Protection, as of November 22, 2019, 198,392 acres have burned in the state as a result of wildfires. This year alone, wildfires have sparked 6,190 wildfire-related incidents, leading to three fatalities and the destruction of 732 structures. The wildfires have also forced tens of thousands of people to evacuate. According to the department, the length of the fire season is estimated to have increased by 75 days and seems to correspond with an increase in the extent of forest fires across the state. They also list the 2017 and 2018 wildfire season as the most destructive in state history. The greater Los Angeles metropolitan area, the second largest in the country after New York, is at the epicenter of wildfire country. We spoke to Jessica Kellogg from the Emergency Management Department of the City of Los Angeles. Based on our city's location, we're in between two mountain ranges, the Santa Monica Mountains and the San Gabriel Mountains. So we have a lot of homes that meet that urban wildfire interface. So we have to be concerned with clearing brush landscapes and also educating people about what they can do to prepare for wildfires. Dry conditions have prompted the National Weather Service to create an entirely new alert level, issuing an extreme red flag warning for fire danger in Los Angeles County and next door Ventura County. To deal with the threat of wildfires in the region, the city of Los Angeles created a Situation Room, a communication center in which, during emergency situations, 40 specialists from different branches of the city's emergency bureaucracy coordinate operations with teams on the ground and other government agencies. We always take into account what happened in the last activation, like with the Getty fire. So we're constantly making changes and reviewing our after action procedures to improve the emergency operation plan for the next event. The human toll of these new mega fire events on emergency responders is immense. In a simple but solemn ceremony held at the Ventura County Government Center on November 15th, the name of Cal Fire Firefighter Corey Iverson was the 47th added to a memorial wall of those who have fallen in the line of duty. It was added by his widow and daughter. Iverson became a local symbol. He was 32 when he died battling the Thomas Fire on December 14th, 2017, and his wife Ashley was pregnant with their second daughter. The Thomas Fire scorched Ventura and Santa Barbara counties. According to CAL FIRE, it destroyed at least 1,063 structures while damaging 280 others. 
and the fire caused over $2.2 billion in damages. The local agriculture industry suffered at least $171 million in losses, and 27,000 people were evacuated. This is um, the second time I've participated in this memorial. I've also participated in a few um, fallen firefighter memorials, uh, specifically to their final their final call, and it's very sad. Um, it really drives it home when you see uh, family members, uh, their, their children, and it, it really makes you um, think about the people that matter most to you. The danger factor on the job is something that we do consider. It's on our mind all the time. But I wouldn't say my job, I wouldn't say that I'm in a constant state of fear though, because that's why we train. After the ceremony, the Real News visited the area that had burned just days earlier from the Maria fire, another mega fire, which burned more than 6,500 acres of land. There, we spoke to Brian McGrath, a public information officer for the Ventura County Fire Department. So we're, we're just leaving the Ventura County Fallen Firefighter Memorial. To date, we've had 47 firefighters that have gone on that memorial wall. I had one personal friend, Ryan Osler, who passed away in 2016 from a water tender rollover. And that was very, very hit, hit me very hard uh, because it just really brings home that it truly is whenever we go out, we may never come home. Christensen emphasized that there is scientific consensus tying the increased intensity and length of California's fire season to the impacts of climate change. Um, so scientists are, you know, climate scientists will debate, you know, whether you can attribute any particular fires or set of fires to climate change. But there, there does seem to be an emerging consensus that, you know, the increasing heat, increasing dryness does contribute to the flammability of the landscape. Uh, this year, uh, we are coming off of a very wet winter, so there was a lot of production of vegetation, of grass, of, you know, shrub leaves, and, you know, and then we had a very, you know, dry, hot summer, and it all dried up, so there's a lot of fuel, and so the winds um, that come in the fall, the dry winds, the Santa Ana winds that, that really fuel and push these fires was pushing the fires west uh, into um, the neighborhoods of, of, of Bel Air and, and, and Pacific Palisades and, and, burn, and burned houses there and many people were evacuated there. Henry Lin is a postdoctoral scholar from UCLA Center for Climate Science. Lin specializes in the impacts of global warming on regional climate extremes, particularly in the California area. Uh, climate change actually enhances the wildfire, but, but climate change doesn't cause the fire. Yeah, because it's human and the lightning causing the fire. Lynn is a part of a team of scientists working on a project called California's Ecosystem Futures, the future of California drought, fire, and forest dieback. They use high-resolution computer models of climate, vegetation, and fire behavior to answer questions about the future of forests and fire in California. The research project began in 2018 and will extend through the year 2021. So from our research, we found actually during the global warming in California, we get much drier and much warmer, which cause enhance the risk of wildfire and the large fire, wildfires. And another key factor is because our people right now, we expand the house where it's primed to be fires. So it's a high risk for people. Christensen said that while scientists are worried about the impacts of climate change in fueling more intense and more frequent wildfires, he believes it is better to move the narrative from problems to solutions. I think seeing every fire or series of fires or other natural disasters as the apocalypse, the sign of the end times, 
uh, really prevents us from understanding that longer narrative that we need to focus on, which is that around the world, countries, cities, states, other jurisdictions are working to reduce carbon emissions. Are they doing it fast enough? No, we need to do it faster. And the path envisioned in the Paris Accords is to continually do it faster, get better at it, ramp it up so that by 2050, we get to carbon neutrality and climate stability. One of the solutions proposed by climate advocates is to put a halt to sprawl-style housing development. It's a real estate planning paradigm currently reigning supreme in LA County, but it is also one currently subject to ongoing political struggle in the region. Thanks a lot for watching, appreciate it. Uh, but do us one more solemn favor, hit the subscribe button below. You know you want to. Stay up on the videos.